Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, always known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review, and today I'll be taking a look at the highest requested vehicle playset, the 1987 Defiant Space Vehicle Launch Complex. Now, I'll be splitting this review up into three parts. It was itself a three-part set, and I'll just be going over just, just like an overview introduction today. And I'll also be talking about the crawler launch gantry portion of the vehicle set. The set also included a space shuttle, the Defiant proper, and a booster rocket, which also turned into a space station. And unlike any other retail set at the time, the Defiant actually included not one, but two action figures. The astronaut pilot named Payload, as well as a crawler gantry uh, driver called Hardtop. Now, they both made their first appearance in the old Marvel Comic run in G.I. Joe issue 64, but that's more or less a cameo. It isn't until G.I. Joe issue 65 that they're finally named and the three-piece uh, launch complex is finally shown properly. While it's easy to wonder how a realistic space shuttle fits into an over-the-top military toy line, G.I. Joe has quite a history in space. Starting with the 1960s 12-inch G.I. Joe with his pre-moon landing Mercury space capsule, and up to the 1980s where Flash and Breaker are shown hitching a ride in a modern NASA space shuttle in the 1983 G.I. Joe comic issue number 8, then showing space-modified Sky Strikers in the 1985 G.I. Joe cartoon, The Wrong Stuff. It's little wonder the comic used the space shuttle quite often after its first appearance in 1987. Ironically, the crawler launch gantry was never shown in a combat situation. The Defiant Space Vehicle Launch Complex was the second largest G.I. Joe playset in the vintage 1982 to 1994 line, right behind the massive 1985 USS Flag aircraft carrier playset. And, just like the USS Flag, the Defiant shipped to stores one per case. Actually, a cardboard slipcover served as the shipping box. However, the Defiant was the most expensive playset produced during that 1982-1994 run. It averaged at $120. The much bigger USS Flag averaged at only $100. But it makes sense in a way. The aircraft carrier was a much simpler playset. Basically a giant runway for your jets. You're paying the amount for the plastic used. For the Defiant, you got three large complex vehicles, two of which could double as playsets. You could view it as $40 each. You'll have to forgive me for cheating a little bit here, because even though I have the space shuttle and the booster rocket portion of a three-piece set, I elected not to buy the crawler launch gantry portion, so we'll just have to make do with some photos instead. Now, as you can see, the uh, space shuttle and the booster rocket, they have very real-world influences. They aren't uh, sprouting all sorts of G.I. Joe levels of armament. That was left to the crawler launch gantry portion. This massive toy is almost 23 inches wide, 18 inches high, and 30 inches long in the closed-up transport mode. There are 11 cannons all over the crawler, but only three different types. On the front, there is a large dual cannon attached to a gunner's seat base. The base swivels and the cannon pivots. On the back are two more of the same. However, the seat bases are on a sliding track, so they can move forward and back as well. Up on the blue gantry doors are four quad cannons, which are attached by mounting arms, which allow pivoting and swiveling. A fifth quad cannon is revealed by removing the space shuttle booster rocket. This is the floor in closed up transport mode, and this cannon can only be used once the crawler is in launch mode. And finally, on top of the front driver's cockpit is a turret style cannon which only swivels. The opening windshield reveals a cockpit that seats two action figures. On both sides of the crawler, there are the same cannons, but flipped 180 degrees. Behind the driver's cockpit is a control cabin, accessed by opening the second windshield. 
The rotating piece on top is a scanner with an attached periscope that goes down and rests in front of the seated figure's face. There is only one seat, but it swivels to simulate the scanner being operated. Behind that, there is an open doorway that leads to some stairs. All along this side fender of the crawler are walkways with foot pegs. The other side is different, but still has many stairs and foot pegs for figures. Above the fender, you'll notice a ladder leading to a small one-man station. This is a feature which is only usable when the crawler is in launch mode, and this section is vertical. The crawler can be rolled along the ground thanks to its 18 wheels. The wheel assembly is needlessly complex. Did the designer think kids were going to off-road this 12-pound toy? On the back is a very obvious crank, and by winding it clockwise, the entire upper section simultaneously moves forward and angles up, thanks to some clever gearing and track system. Note, there is a small square piece above the handle that indicates the direction. This is often lost. The crawler is now in launch mode, and opening the doors completes the transformation. Now the playset is almost 34 inches high and almost 3 feet wide. The two blue open doors house service elevators which you have to manually move to one of the three railed off little sections. Beneath there is a little folding blast shield beneath the thruster platform. The raising of the gantry also revealed two rooms inaccessible in transport mode. An engine room and a control room. The engine room has two small removable panels. These are black plastic squares with a slight curve and are easily lost and missed in photos. There are a few Easter eggs sprinkled throughout the crawler's surface detail, such as tripwires mines molded onto the back of the launch gantry wall, and Mahler MBT engine cover molded in the middle of the thruster platform, and a snake armor back molded onto the upper part of the right gantry door, as well as a snowcat engine cover on the bottom of the same door. The major reason I elected not to buy a crawler is also the major flaw in its design. It's too fragile. The crawler was purposely made with lightweight plastic to bring down the overall shipping weight and packaging strength to its detriment. The big blue doors are so prone to shattering, I was afraid to get this ship to me from anywhere. When you add the weight of the space shuttle and booster rocket, the intricate wheel assemblies on the crawler cannot hold the set upright. They will just break off. Hinges throughout the set are also prone to cracking, and the spring mechanism which pushes the launch gantry section forward and up is prone to tearing apart under stress. I would only recommend this part of the Defiant set if you can see it with your own eyes and transport it home with your own hands. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.